post-race report and never get tired of hearing that okay let's get to the recap Well, if you can believe it, we got her done. 40 weeks of training and uh, paid off. Evan and Lauren and I crossed that finish line at Ironman Texas 2019 last weekend. Uh, it was a true suffer fest, let me tell you. But glorious day, uh, glorious finish to a really, really long training, workout commitment, and uh, a really, really long race day. <laughs> so um, let me give you the, uh, the finish time. So Evan finished in 12 hours, 18 minutes, and 31 seconds. Actually, that was about a minute and a half off his PR, which he was kind of bummed about. Uh, Lauren, in her first ever triathlon ever, not to mention Ironman, was 15 hours, 2 minutes, and 47 seconds. Just a fantastic effort. Uh, and I finished in 13 hours, 28 minutes, and 14 seconds, uh, which was a my PR by 36 minutes from my 2014 race. So really, really stoked about that. Um, you know, to be honest, other than the wind on the bike, um, I don't think we could have asked for better conditions for race day. I mean, it really, really was, uh, you know, pretty perfect. Uh, got a little warm, but you know, it's Texas. It could have been, it could have been a lot worse. In previous years, it has been a lot worse. So, um, so good, good day, good race day. Um, okay, so we're gonna do a little recap of the day, and we'll show you some videos and some pictures uh, as I talk through this to give you a feel for, for how the day went. So, um, the swim, swim start, uh, it was actually a great swim. Um, There's always a crowd, of course. I think we had about 2,500 uh, athletes. And, um, but none of us, uh, of the of us three, we never really had any big issues. I think Lauren got beat up a little bit. Um, had somebody kind of nudge me, kind of knock my goggles off, not off, but just nudged him a little bit. Got a little bit of water in, in my goggles. But other than that, it was not a problem. They did a, a rolling start this time. Uh, I, when I did it the first time, it was a mass start and a little more chaotic. This rolling start, uh, limited the number of people getting in the water at one time and so you know it really was not a big deal um, so my shoulder if you've watched any of these videos you know I have a shoulder issue on my right right shoulder and uh, it has not bugged me all season um, three minutes into the swim it was really aching and and, and hurting and so I had to for no particular reason I, mean, I have no idea it was not pushing hard my heart rate was fine I mean I'm not my effort was fine I mean I was in my little box my training pace Iron Man's pace um, but for some reason that shoulder really gave me a hard time until the last third of the, of the swim so I had to kind of take it easy and so I was a little bit off my pace in the swim by about four minutes not a big deal but just crazy you know it's, I don't know why those things happen but uh but anyways, it, it was it was a good swim. Uh, went great. I mean, it was I was felt like I was literally no worse for the wear getting out of that water than when I started. I mean, I was ready for the bike, so great. Uh, so the bike, a little bit of a different story. Uh, that bike course is really flat, uh, but that south wind from the Gulf on race day was a relentless 15 to 20 miles an hour. And uh, and so <clears throat> after T1, you get on the bike, you're go heading south through the woodlands, you get to get to the Hardy toll Tollway. And Hardy, the Hardy, Hardy is literally due south, just a little bit to the east. I mean, that's kind of south, southeast was the wind. 
And so you were just dead into that wind for 20, around 20, 22 miles before you turned around and got a tailwind. Uh, that relentless 20 plus miles into the wind, you go up those overpasses, you're going up hills, you know, even though it's flat, you're still having to do inclines. And it was brutal, brutal. Turned around, got a, got a tailwind, but you never make up what you lose. Um, go up north 20 miles, turn around and do that same south 20 miles into the wind again. And by then you are just beat. Uh, there, at every, at every underpass or overpass under where we were racing, uh, there were cyclists, there were athletes laid out, bike on the side of the wall, laid out they were done that wind just beat them <laughs> it was brutal uh so needless to say <clears throat> if you did not mind your heart rate on the bike it was definitely going to show up in the run and and it did um uh, trust me th there there was not a cloud in the sky sun was was out and uh thank the lord we had low humidity because without that uh it, it, it i mean i'm telling you it looked like a late night, you know, zombie movie uh, on on that third lap of the run. I mean, I'm sh I'm if I had to guess, I would say about 80% of the people on that third lap were walking, and they looked like the Walking Dead. I mean, it, it was. I think that wind on the bike did them in, and they were just trying to hold on to the finish. So, <clears throat> uh, so my run. Uh, and my bike, my bike went well. I mean, I just stuck to my plan, stuck to my guns and did heart rate and, you know, into that wind going 12, 13, 14 miles an hour and people passing me and I just had to suck it up, you know, it paid off on the run. So although I did walk on the water stops, uh, at all the water stops, well, not the first lap, lap and a half into the second lap and all the third lap. I walked uh, those water stops to make sure I got nutrition, got cooled down. They had sponges trying to cool your, you know, your core temperature down a little bit. Other than that, uh, I did not walk. I, I ran the, the course. And uh, that last lap, let me tell you, I was having a very long conversation with myself about a hundred, the hundred reasons to just walk you know um, but I never walk and that's where all those workouts those long ses sessions training sessions pay off you know you, you rely on the mental toughness toughness that you build mile up by mile in those long workouts for months at a time because that's what that's the only thing that saves you I mean you're hurting you are you're just done you know and you still got eight miles to go and uh, you got to keep, got to keep moving, keep jogging, keep running, and uh, it is, it is just a mental battle. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, all seriousness, um, it's in those moments that you really discover who you are. Uh, and to be honest, those moments don't come very often in life. Um, you, you know, it's rare that you find yourself in that unique or odd situation where you have it's a mix of pain uh, fear of failure you know fears excitement uh, and and really an exhilaration kind of an exhilaration of of what you know is coming that you're about to do something extraordinary um, it, it's it's uh, it's unique really um, and so I mean, I wouldn't trade it for the world. Uh, extremely painful, <laughs> but crossing that finish line uh, was, you know, was really glorious. Uh, I got to say, I'm glad it's over. Uh, been a long, long training season. Uh, really, really proud, proud of Lauren and her finish. I mean, just she just controlled it, man. She just finished in a really strong, commanding way having never done a triathlon ever, not a sprint, not a nothing. And she just 
but she got off that bike and she ran most of the way and just could not be more proud of her. So kudos to you, Miss Lauren. Um, so great race day. Um, and guys, look, hearing you are an Ironman and cross that finish line is cool for sure. Uh, but the really great news in all of this is that not only did we manage to reach our fundraising goal of $25,000, we actually got a little over $26,000 uh, with some last minute uh, commitment. So <clears throat> that is really something to be proud of. I mean, to all of you who supported us, I mean, watched these videos and gave and got the word out. I mean, you know, you've, you've been with us all this time and, you know, you watch that, that dollar amount go from 7000 to 8000 to 10000 it kind of plateaued and I'm thinking, I don't know if we're going to get there. But, uh, but we did. And so thank you to all you folks who, who joined us, became a part of what we were trying to get done and, and we got it. We, we accomplished the goal. So uh, it, is, it is just cool. It's a, it's a true pri privilege to be a part of something that we know is going to help families, ch children who, who suffer every day. You know, they, they just have, are sort of hopeless. Um, with your help, we're, we're helping to provide uh, just a ray of hope for these people for something better. Uh, it's worth it. So uh, anyways, thank you very much. For any of y'all who would like to continue to follow Tying Vines, uh, or give, continue to give. We have uh, have their link in the description below. You can click on that and go read, check out what's going on. They've got a donate button, of course, so hit that early and often. Um, they need all the help they can get. Um, so anyways, great, great ending to a great season, uh, both on, on the race front and the fundraising front, so thank you so much. Um, let me round this out by giving you a final recap of the season. Uh, kind of neat to, to look at these overall big, big miles that we did over 40 weeks. In the swim, we, I, I, I say we, these are my, these are my miles. Did a total of 204,877 yards in the pool. That's a total or an equivalent of 116.5 miles. Dang. On the bike, we did 3,501 mile, 1.5 miles. So 3501.5. Now for you cyclists out there, a lot of that was on the trainer. Had to be. Uh, there's no other way to really count it. So I included it in there. You know, if you're a purist, maybe you take some of that off, but, but it's time. And it's, it's uh, so 3501 on the bike. Uh, on the run, 707.2 miles. And a total active work time of 373 hours and 39 minutes. That I can never get back. <laughs> but it was time well spent. So, anyways, okay guys, that's it. It's been quite a journey. Uh, these past 40 weeks and, and you know I, I want to thank all of you for being a part of it with us um, it's been a real pleasure there's really not much else to say so with that uh, I'm going to sign off uh, be sure and leave us any comments if you have any we'd love to hear from you I don't know if we're going to do this again um, I'm not going to do Iron Man again for a while we may do another fundraiser for tying vines. If so, we'll uh, we'll fire this back up and, and uh, see you then. For now, signing off. Thanks for watching.